in this ongoing series, it seems, on spiritual warfare, I didn't, I don't normally want to get into a topic that takes a lot of time and explanation and massive amounts of information within the scriptures to explain what spiritual warfare is because there's so many people that get off on supernatural stuff that I didn't want them to get distracted by unnatural things to become so supernatural that they don't realize that it's normal as part of the Christian life and that there is a time and a place to study these things and to know them and to maybe grow through them because there's a lot of bad information that maybe people do and experience and some have some, you know, ability in, but they don't seem to have the balance of Scripture, you know, within the whole context of the written Word of God so that we could just open up a Bible and say, oh, look, here's where they get it from because a lot of times they get off on tangents. Whether it be like, claiming some aspect of the flesh is a spiritual problem or whether some aspect of sin is personal or an enemy doing it, whether it's the an attack by some demonic activity or whether it's really just the sinful flesh acting out its own normal aspects and attitudes. So, I always resist really doing a lot of <laughs> meat in these videos because frankly I'd rather you came over my house and we talked for days because I could talk for days on any subject you know when it comes to really the depth of what sometimes reality of the experience the wisdom the study and the knowledge all three applied in equal portions in my life as God has taken me through these experiences in order to minister to the body of Christ as a whole at large and as well as to the church triumphant if you want to call it that or the church universal or the church as members in particular of the body of Christ that has become the bride that is waiting for the Messiah to return sure I'd love to discuss these things at length and get to the realization that we can come to a cooperative conclusion that we would both agree on, but hey, you know, maybe I'm enough Jewish that it would take us about a week, you know, so unfortunately I have to do these in segments and and sometimes you lose people along the way because they don't really want to know. They just want, you know, a drive-through solution. They want an instant fix and I have it. I mean, to be honest, you know, in any situation and circumstance within the Bible, I have the the shortcut for everyone, you know, and I've, I've told people this over and over again, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. If you want an instant fix, if you want an instant recipe for salvation, for ministry, for counseling, for guidance, for spiritual warfare, for whatever, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Eat it, chew on it, think about it, see if you can do it. That's it. <laughs> and I'm not being facetious. It really is the entire Bible contained in one verse or two verses. That literally, if you could do it, you'd have it all solved. But unfortunately, the application of it may take you a lifetime to really get to what God is saying there. So, in spiritual warfare, there's often this disassociation of realizing the person from the action. There's a difference. You see, the person... It's kind of like a water bottle. This is the person. We don't hate the person. The person is okay. It's what's inside the person that's kind of like messed up. Well, get in there. Dump it out. Fill it full of something good. Like the Holy Spirit. Because you see, you're a vessel. You're a water bottle. So am I. <laughs> I'm a Pepsi water bottle. <laughs> but you're a water bottle. You're a vessel. You were meant to be filled with something. Now, we always say, you know, and Christians always do this, well, you know, you got to be filled with Jesus. Well, how does he do it? What literally happens when you get saved, you know, you go, well, the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to 
save this person. So what I'll do is I'll pop this top, blow out whatever's inside, and I'll make it empty, ready to be filled. So then you get to fill it with what you want. What do you want to put in there? I think I'll put some, hey, I got a cup of coffee here, you know, and it's got caffeine and sugar, you know, and creamer. See? Can you see it? It's brown. See? Creamer, sugar. I'll put it in my water bottle. No, you won't. That's a water bottle. You put water in it. Not coffee, fool. Ah, so you don't want coffee in the water bottle. You got a coffee cup? You drink coffee. You getting the picture yet? Spiritual warfare? How you got saved? What you are? You're a vessel? It's not about the person. It's about the vessel. It's not about what's outside, what's inside. Following along here? I hope so. Oh, Pepsi. Yummy. Water bottle. Pepsi. Water. <laughs> I love Pepsi. Pepsi makes me feel so good inside. I get a sugar fix. I get a caffeine rush. I love Pepsi. I've been drinking it since I was a kid. But it's not a water bottle. And it doesn't have water in it. What are we going to put in there? Well, you see, here's the problem. Some of us are kind of like, you know, bigger vessels, and some of us are smaller vessels. You know, this guy has only a little bit of water in him, but you know what? If he poured out some of his water and put it in here, it'd fill up more in here than it would in here. So the little bit that's here could fill this up because it's a little one and it's the big one. It's kind of like what teaching does. You know, when it's a big vessel, it doesn't take as much, you know, to, or it takes a lot more to fill it up, you know, and once it's full, it doesn't get affected by so many things around it. It's got too much stuff full of it, water, that seems to dilute anything that gets added to it. Because, you see, I have this big vessel here, so if I put, oh, a little bit of Pepsi in there, I can't tell there's any Pepsi in there. It's been diluted. There's so much of that water in there, it diluted it. Wow. But if I put Pepsi in here, Uh, it's dark. Yeah. Pepsi diluted with water. In the world, you are filling yourself up with something. It could be Pepsi. It could be water. It could be living water. Now, the living water is the word. The word is living water. We're told that washed by the water. Washed by the water, the word. You know, so you could fill yourself up with living water. And you know what? I could come along in your life and I could say, Hi, how are you? How you doing, bro? You're a water bottle. Give me a drink. And I would taste and see that your experiences of life, as you're sharing them with me, as you're telling me about God, as you're revealing the Word of God, the living water, as you're sharing it with me, I would taste it and go, Man, that tastes good. Or, you could tell me you're full of living water. Huh. You're, are you really full of living water? You look like dirt. Smells like dirt. Yeah. It tastes like coffee. I wanted water. 
or Pepsi. Do you get it yet? You are a vessel. What you put in you is what you give out. If you've got a lot of the word in you, even if you get some of the world in there, you're going to dilute it. It's going to filter. It won't be so much of an effect on someone that they'll taste and go, well, there's so much water being such a big vessel. He's got lots of Lots of word in him, lots of experience, lots of study, lots of joy, lots of peace, lots of the fruit of the Spirit, and it's all been crushed and worked out in his life. And it's almost pure. Tastes pretty good. If I filtered it a little more, it'd probably taste even better. So then that person goes and gets refilled full of living water, and guess what? They taste good because you taste and see of their life's experiences and they are refreshing to you. Because if I drink a Pepsi, it's a temporary fix, but it doesn't refresh me after I've been working in the world, running and doing and experiencing all of life. Spiritual warfare is the same thing. Spiritual warfare is pretty simple, actually. It boils down to this. You get to take your pick. You can have a 7-Up. You can have a Pepsi. Matter of fact, you can even have coffee. But you could also have living water. And spiritual warfare is to tempt you into being so free to choose that you choose the wrong one. Because you see, if you drink enough Pepsi, you're still thirsty for Pepsi. If you drink enough 7-Up, you still want a little more 7-Up. If you let it get lukewarm, it doesn't taste so good. But when you drink water, it accomplishes what it was meant to do inside you, which is to flush out the toxins that are in your body. Did you know that the water going into you gets mixed up inside and becomes part of your blood system? It becomes the water is transformed into blood, and the blood is then transforming you by taking those toxins out of your muscles and out of your cellular levels and taking and removing those toxins and dumping them into the urinary tract. And the urinary tract expiates all that yucky stuff that was, you know, being used up that it had to consume in order to take it from the food that you ate to build up muscle so that you could operate with energy and experience life. And then it goes and cleans all that, takes it out of it, and then gets rid of all the refuse matter. Now, you know that. That what I got to do with the Bible? You can tell me I got to read it? You know I got to drink it? Take it in? No. But you could be an empty vessel. And you know what? Your life will reflect that you're an empty vessel. You got nothing for anybody to taste and see. You got nothing to say. You could spew out all your seven up. You could vomit all your Pepsi. You could drink enough alcohol, you know what, so that you could just start heaving because of toxicity running out your spew all over everyone because you're telling them all the yucky stuff inside. Because you see, when a person wants to drink of your life, they take a sip. But when you're spewing it out there on people, you're vomiting what they didn't ask you for. That's a lot like preaching. 90% of preaching that goes on nowadays is a lot of vomit. It's got, oh, it's got word in it. There's some meat of the word in there. There's also some uh, water of the word in there. There's a little bit of love. There's a little bit of joy and there's a little bit of peace, but it's been masticated, chewed upon, thrown down into the stomach, bile all mixed in and acids, and then all of a sudden when somebody wants to, they go ahead and go, I want to preach to you, brother, about this. And so they throw up all over somebody and they go, Now, didn't that taste good? You ever eat bile? Of course it didn't taste good. It's vomit. It's somebody putting their personal experiences into the Word of God, chewing upon it, and throwing it out at somebody. A lot of that is preaching. They say 90%. It's up to God. I know if I want something, I could ask you 
and you would offer me your life to look at, to sip and see, to taste and see that the Lord is good, if you're sharing with me the water. So what are you sharing? What have you become in a vessel that you are? What kind of vessel are you? Do you know that your life is a vessel? Your physical body, being the temple of the Holy Spirit, is an empty carcass, a dead badger skin of a tabernacle. Not a temple. Tabernacle, folks. Sorry, you got the wrong word in the Greek. It's a tabernacle of God. It means that on the outside is dead, on the inside is what counts. So the inside is where you're at, and that's what you need to take care of. So in spiritual warfare, the battle is what you're putting in you and what you're bringing out from you, or what people are tasting from you and seeing what you are. You can be a Pepsiholic. I am. <laughs> and maybe it won't affect you at all. Lust, lust. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> you'll be a some alcoholic or an alcoholic or some other ones where it will affect you in a dramatic way and it'll make you crave after that. And you'll always be thinking about that. But you see, the choices were yours to fill yourself with what you choose to be. And so God wants you to be more than what you are. He wants to fill you and make you a vessel for his glory, a vessel that he's designed for his purposes. He wants you to be someone who is able to be put up on a mantle and then when taken down and handed to someone else's life, they can take your life and look at you and say, wow, look what he's got inside. Ooh, that's so clear. It's so clean. Doesn't smell. Ah, oh, God, it tastes so good. It's refreshing. It's fresh and clean. Are you that? By love, serve one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of weakness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Jesus. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, See that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Be kindly affectionate to one another, in brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, and gives grace to the humble. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. You see, I could offer you a Pepsi. And you only need a good wine. <laughs> I'll give you water. But that's really what you want. I can give of you what I have. And if I share with you the joy and the beauty of the Lord, and you share with me your life's experiences, and we blend them together, then as you pour it back and forth, just like in a chemical formula, you begin to dilute all the infirmities out of it, and it becomes pure. You become, by way of cooperation and coordinating together, one giant vessel that perhaps, in pouring back and forth of your life's experiences, the diluting process of your sins becomes less affecting you, and you begin to purify yourself at some point in time. So when you come together in sharing with one another, you share less of the impurity and more of the purity of God himself. And you become more holy, as it were, complete unto him. Completed by his process of changing you and taking out those things that are inside so that he can put more of what he wants to fill you with. What do you want to be filled with? Peace, 
love, joy, meekness, temperance, kindness, gentleness. What comes out of your mouth, literally the mouth of the vessel that you are, what comes out is from what's in within. So you have to have gotten it in there somehow for it to come out of you. So share with others and see what's coming out of your mouth and read it and look and see and weep. Because 90% of people that talk will not witness Jesus. Most of their words are not about God. 99% you could see it and read it and look at it even on the internet. Isn't scripture, but it is. Pepsi. Seven up. Coffee. Flesh. Satisfying ourselves in some way. We vent what we want to satisfy ourselves with. We like to hear ourselves speak. We like to watch ourselves do things. So, of course, we promote ourselves. But God says, don't do that. He says, look, yes, learn. Yes, grow. Yes, become a planting of the Lord. Become one of my plantings. And though parts of you may not look too pretty, there's always the possibility that a part of you just might bloom where you're planted. You can be used of God, and that eliminates spiritual warfare. When God is your light, no darkness can come in. But if you put inside you the world and its ways, you put inside you anger, violence, wrath, malice, what are you doing? Or if you do this. What have you done to the water bottle that God said was your brother? Can you fill him up again? When you've done this to one of the least of his brethren, do you know what you have to do next? You have to go back and try to undo the mess you did. Now God may help you. Now God may do it for you. But you don't walk away from them, leaving them in the condition they were in. Or when you see a brother who just keeps taking a little bit of sin and just keeps adding a little bit of sin, because it's not so bad. Just a little bit. He's going to fill himself up and eventually be poured out upon others. Do you know how messy it is when somebody spills something? Do you know how messy it is when your life is spilt upon all the people around you? Hmm, that tastes pretty good. Maybe I ought to market it. When your life is spilt rather than tasted and sipped, then it becomes a mess that needs to be cleaned up. And you're spewed all over the ground, as it were, or all over the people, and they're all splashed on. They have to wash their clothes of you. Spiritual warfare is not about, and this is the most important thing, I led all up to this, so that you would understand one thing only about spiritual warfare. It's not the person that's at fault. Spiritual warfare is about trying to change the focus from the problem to the person. It's trying to say, What's in here doesn't count, it's what's out here. That's spiritual warfare. That's the most important thing that everyone makes a mistake. Oh, well, I'm going to change the outside. I want to fix that guy and make him see right, talk right, do right, and be right, because they don't realize that they're really a Pepsi bottle. See, it says Pepsi right there. G, no, no, that's not a G. It's not a G, it's really a Pepsi bottle. Looks like a Pepsi bottle. Smells like a Pepsi bottle. 
tastes like a Pepsi bottle. No, that's not the Pepsi bottle. That's actually my religion. My religion is the religion of, you know what, I get what I like, I like what I want, God's going to make me into what I want to be. Pepsi. Pepsi for me. Now, I don't mean to pick on Pepsi, because I love Pepsi. <laughs> so, sorry, Pepsi, if you're out there. But if you're a water bottle, you're not meant to be Pepsi. Sorry. And people will try to do that to you when they really don't realize spiritual warfare is about changing what's inside so that you could be what you're meant to be outside. That's the number one rule of going into any kind of spiritual battle. You don't pray against the person. You pray against the problem. You pray against the spirit behind it, whatever it is that's influencing it. Whatever affluent, affluence means those outside manifestations of something that is affecting or being made an effect of by an action or a reaction to something. So the affectation is what you're praying against because it's causing the person to try to fill themselves up with Pepsi when really all you got to do is talk them into drinking water. All you got to do is bless them with love, joy, and peace. Because if this cup is full, guess what happens? If this cup were full, and I'm not going to demonstrate it because I get it all over me, but if this cup were full of joy, if this cup were full of love, if this cup were full of peace, meekness, kindness, temperance, gentleness, all of the Word of God, when you try to pour something in it that doesn't belong there, it's going to spill out and it won't get in. Now, guess what? If we put the Holy Spirit in there and he's flowing constantly like an artesian, constantly flowing out, if it was like a spigot and the water's coming out and you tried to put something in, it would just be thrown away. <gasps> There's the answer. You mean if I was like an artesian well and I was constantly like giving out peace, love, joy, peace, love, joy, peace, love, joy, peace, love, joy, loving my brother, loving my brother, loving my brother, bless my brother, bless my brother, bless my brother, bless my brother quote scripture, whatever, sing, the joyous dance, and it's constantly coming out, 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 nothing can go in. You want to be easy, right? <laughs> when you're full of joy and you're laughing, you can't be very well talking about trash, can you? Now, I learned it from Romaine. I took Romaine's idea, and I stole it, and I changed it to make it whatever you're full of flowing out. You can't put something in at the same time it's flowing out. So if you're flowing out with joy, love, and peace, that's my version. Remain's version was simple. He said in an argument, stick your thumb in it. In other words, if you're fighting, shut up and stick your thumb in it. Because first of all, you look stupid like a baby. And then you can't say anything when you got your thumb in your mouth. So the number one solution to all marital problems was stick a thumb in it. It works. Why? Because when your mouth is occupied with your thumb, it can't talk. That's a spiritual reality. Now, you say, well, what do you mean? Well, when you're full of joy and you're sharing love, you can't talk trash. When you're full of peace and you're talking about Jesus, you can't talk trash. You can't talk about all these other garbage things when it's coming out of you, the love of God. So if you're overflowing with the Holy Spirit who said he would point to Jesus, he would point to truth, he would point to Jesus. He would always be talking about Jesus. He wouldn't speak of himself, but he would speak of me, Jesus said. So if you're always talking about Jesus, guess where the attention goes? To Jesus! It's that simple. Well, yes, but nobody wants the simple solution. So I gave you the shortcut. Unfortunately, in this spiritual warfare series, I know people want the long cut, because you could have like, you know, the quick quick mix, you know, kind of like, you know, how you can, there's shortcuts you can do in cooking, you go, <laughs> toss it in, microwave, it, and get back out. Or you could go the long way, and I already know which way you're going to take, the long way. The dust shall return to the earth as it was. It is sown in corruption, it is sown in dishonor. It is sown in weakness. It is sown a natural body. The first man is of the earth, and he is earthly. Dust thou art, 
and dust and unto dust shalt thou return. One dies in his full strength, being wholly at ease and quiet. Another dies in the bitterness of his soul and never eats with pleasure. They shall lie down the same in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. My flesh shall rest in hope. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. The Lord Jesus Christ shall change your vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The truth is, since you are flesh, and you are vile, and you are just a plastic water bottle right now. Even though you could fill it up full of the water of the word. And you could bless others. And you could be a blessing. And you could be a joy. And they could remember you forever. And declare how faithful God has been to them through your life. And they could taste and see that the Lord was with you. I'm afraid you're probably a lot like me. You know, you're settling for second best. And I don't mean that Coke is first, but that you're willing to kind of deal with your addiction to judge people, dealing with your addiction to be violent, dealing with your addiction to be, oh, self-righteous because we get to judge people. Otherwise, how do we know that they're wrong and how do we know that we're right? Or do we need to know whether we're right or wrong if we're being obedient? You mean I don't have to know that I'm right about it? What if, what, if you're, what, if I'm wrong? what if you're just obeying God? To obey is better than sacrifice. If we do what God says, how simple it is. So you see, your flesh one day will be pretty good. But in the meantime, I know you want the hard way about spiritual warfare. So guess what? Your choice. You get to choose what kind of vessel you are. You get to choose what you put into that vessel. You get to decide whether you're going to be caught up in the world and participate in the distractions by being full of yourself, full of your flesh, full of the sinfulness of the world, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, full of anger and wrath and malice and intelligence, political means and pride and ego and going after all these other things, or are you going to be full of love? Hey, you know what? All these ingredients have water in them. And something got added to that water to make them what they are. But the base of all these other things is water. So if I stuck with love, with water, it covers a multitude of sins. It is the base of everything. My body is 90% water. Or 80, I forget. But... Air has water in it, too. Huh. Moisture's going up, you know, and ascends into the clouds, and then it comes back down and rains. It kind of... And the water of the Word is kind of like a spiritual thing, you know, so it's like it ascends, and it goes in, and it accomplishes, and it's the base of everything, and... What kind of Word should I take? What kind of Word is there? What would be the base of all water? God. God is love. You can accept or reject this entire message about spiritual warfare or about vessels if you'd like. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. It doesn't bother me a bit. Once, nothing whatsoever about what you choose to do because you know now what the truth is. 
What you choose to do with the vessel that you are is your choice. My part is done. I have said to you, I will come and see what vessel you are. And the way that I can tell what vessel you are is simply by, I get to taste what your life is like. I get to taste and see that the Lord is good in you, or you've really polluted it. But you know what I can do? I can give you a little water to kind of dilute some of the garbage that's in your life because that's what spiritual warfare is about. It really is getting you to pay more attention to the purity of the water of the word as opposed to the impurity of the word of the, of the world. The world's got a lot to say to you, but so does the word of God. Jesus is that word. If you ask him to, he will fill you with himself so that out of you would flow rivers of living water and nothing could come in.